So the first example we will look at is dealing with the case where one link is going to be used as the primary link and the other link is the backup link. And this will be for two links to the same ISP. And it applies when the end site has bought maybe a large primary one link to their upstream provider and a small secondary one link which they use as backup. For example, the primary path might be an E1, 2 megabits per second. The backup might be 64 kilobits per second or something similar. Obviously, to apply to your situation, scale the bandwidths appropriately. If you look at the diagram, you'll see that AS100 is connected by two paths to AS65534. The link between router A and C is the primary path, and the link between router B and D is the backup path. As you can see in the diagram, we've used AS65534 for the end site that is multi-homing. This is a private AS. As we learned earlier, there's no need for a public AS number for this type of multi-homing. The end site has only got two external connections and only connecting to the same upstream provider. AS100 will remove the private AS it hears from its customer. And of course, it will remove any customer sub-prefixes from internet announcements. So let's have a look at see how we configure this. Well, to start off, we announce the slash 19 aggregate on each link. The primary link will receive the slash 19. The backup link will receive the slash 19. This means the upstream provider will see the slash 19 on both paths. And if either link fails, because we're announcing the 19 on the alternative path as well, it ensures continued connectivity for the end site. For inbound, well, the upstream provider simply announces a default route on both paths. So the end site will see the default route on both links. And again, if either link should fail, the default being heard on the other path ensures continued connectivity. But how do we make one path the primary and the other one the backup? Well, as we learned when we looked at the BGP attributes, we can use the metric and the local preference to achieve this. If we do all the traffic engineering from the end site perspective, if the end site announce the slash 19 on the backup path with an increased metric, then the upstream provider will see the two paths, one with metric zero, which is the default, and the other one with a larger metric, larger non-zero metric, which makes this the backup path. For the other way around, the end site will receive the default route on both links. One path will have the default local preference of 100. And the other path, the end site will reduce the local preference, say make it 80. This lower local preference means the backup path is less preferred, hence making it the backup. So with this setup, the backup link having the slash 19 announced with increased metric, and the inbound default route being tagged with a lower local preference will ensure that the backup link functions as designed. And of course, if either link fails, the other one becomes the primary path, ensuring continued connectivity between the end site and the operator. Let's look at the configuration for router A. We've included Cisco IOS configuration, showing how this might be configured. Router A is the primary path on the end site. And you see router A is announcing the aggregate and is accepting the default route in from the upstream provider. Router A, of course, is also originating the slash 19 address space. If we look at router B, we see the same prefix list letting the aggregate out to the upstream provider. And we see another prefix list which also accepts the default route in from the upstream provider. So this is the same configuration as on router A. But we now have two route maps. One route map, which I've called med 10 out, is applied on the outbound announcement. And the other route map, 
LP low in is applied on the incoming announcements. If we look at the next slide, we'll see what the right maps actually are doing. Right map med 10 out sets the metric on all prefixes being sent out to the upstream provider. We're only announcing the slash 19, so the slash 19 gets a med of 10 set on it. The route map LP low in matches all prefixes and sets local preference 90 inbound. And then the end site will see the two paths, one with local preference 100 the default on router A, and this one on router B with local preference 90, and we achieve the setup that we were aiming for. If we look at the router C configuration on the upstream provider, all the upstream provider does is originate a default route, sets up a prefix list to let that default outbound to the customer, and creates another prefix list to allow the customer slash 19 address block inbound. It's a very simple configuration. And indeed, it's exactly the same as for router D. Again, a default originate, allowing the customer prefix in, and allowing the default route outbound. So the upstream provider has a very simple configuration, which they don't need to adjust if the customer chooses to swap around which link becomes primary, which link becomes backup. If we look at router E, router E was the upstream provider's connection to the rest of the internet. And I want to point out the remove private AS command. The upstream provider there is stripping out the private AS 65534 in the announcement of the customer prefix out to the internet. As we saw earlier, this is best practice. Private AS numbers should not be seen on the public internet. So the result of this is router E will announce the slash 19 prefix learned from the customer end site out to the internet as though as it was originated from AS100.